This is Fundamentals for Injury Prevention Practitioners. Module 3, Injury Prevention Strategies. This module introduces evidence-informed prevention strategies that relate to specific causes of injury. For a more detailed discussion of these strategies, please refer to the OIPRC's Evidence-Informed Practice Recommendations. Preventing Falls Two populations that have received special attention for fall prevention strategies are children and older adults. In children, strategies that have been shown to reduce falls include reducing hazards in the home and on the playground. In the home, the proper use of window guards and stair guards are important. Providing education to parents, called anticipatory guidance, about risks in their home can be effective. This has been studied with family physicians and other healthcare practitioners. For older adults, there has been a great deal of resources invested into understanding fall prevention. The overarching recommendation is to complete a validated fall risk assessment for individuals and tailor prevention strategies to mitigate the risks identified in the assessment. Risk assessment tools are available for community settings, long-term care and retirement homes, and hospitals. The best prevention programs involve multifactorial strategies, as outlined in the BEACH model. According to the BEACH model, multifactorial prevention programs should relate to the following factors behavior change, education, equipment, environment, activity, clothing and footwear, and health management. Behavior change is the common goal of any fall prevention program. Education refers to the education of program participants. Equipment identifies the proper use of mobility devices. Environment refers to identifying and removing hazards in the home and community. Activity refers to participating in physical activity, especially balance training. Clothing and footwear refers to encouraging appropriate clothing and footwear in older adults. And health management identifies comprehensive health management, for example, vision, bone health, and nutrition. Preventing motor vehicle crashes. Strategies at the individual level include target prevention of high-risk behaviors, such as impaired driving, driver fatigue, distracted driving, and aggressive driving. Promote the use of seat belts, and promote and educate on the appropriate use of child passenger restraint systems. At the population level, Integrated road safety campaigns, which use both traditional and non-traditional forms of media to emphasize consistent main messages. Support these campaigns with activities related to the three E's of injury prevention, education, enforcement, and engineering. Preventing pedestrian injuries.
The long-term vision for improving pedestrian safety is the complete streets approach. Viewing the road network holistically enables communities to reduce infrastructure costs by designing a transportation network that suits all users at the outset, rather than retrofitting to include pedestrian, cycling, or transit amenities later. There are also safety and social benefits to be had by lowering traffic speeds, expanding mobility options, improving air quality, increasing opportunities for physical fitness, and designing more attractive communities. This illustration depicts an example of the complete street's vision. The streetscape provides accommodation not only for cars, but for transit, bicyclists, and pedestrians. Other strategies that can improve pedestrian safety include traffic calming measures that slow traffic, improve visibility, and redistribute traffic around target areas, signals such as leading pedestrian intervals, the addition of raised medians and curbs, encouraging pedestrians to be visible, bright clothing during the day and reflective clothing at night. Angled street parking to ensure pedestrians see oncoming traffic before stepping into the road. Preventing sports and recreation injuries. The types of sport and recreation activities we engage in tend to change with age. Prevention strategies reflect the most common activities for each age group. For children and youth, prevention revolves around improving safety and reducing injury in organized sports, since children are heavily engaged in these activities. Strategies include proper physical training and preparedness, the use of protective equipment, and rules changes focused on improving safety. In adults, adults tend to engage less in organized sporting activities and more in exercise and informal recreation. Strategies to prevent injuries in these activities include adopting a slow and gradual start to any exercise regime, wearing proper attire and footwear, education around the safe use of equipment, and refraining from drinking alcohol during recreational physical activities. In older adults, it's important to encourage exercise while modifying activities according to health status and mobility. Preventing suffocation and breathing incidents. Prevention strategies should focus on creating safer environments for children. Safe sleep environments, safe food preparation, choking hazards out of reach, and removing all hanging window cords, coverings, or drawstrings. Preventing poisoning. In children, poison prevention should focus on the safe storage of medication and harmful household products. Promote the use of child-resistant caps, keep medication locked up and out of sight, keep all medication in original containers. Active supervision at all times should be encouraged. Preventing off-road vehicle injuries. Strategies here relate to reducing injury among younger male ATV drivers and passengers. Advocating for a minimum operating age, 
helmet use, and minimum passenger age. Educating parents, drivers, and communities about high-risk situations, such as driving at high speeds, young ages, and alcohol use. Improving vehicle design to include seat belts, a roll bar, and discourage passengers by limiting space. Preventing suicide and self-harm. There are important distinctions between self-harm and suicide. Self-harm is defined as intentional self-poisoning or self-injury, irrespective of type of motive or the extent of suicidal intent. Because of the way we collect injury data, there are issues distinguishing these two concepts. Hospitals collect data in terms of emergency room visits, hospitalizations, and deaths. ICD-10 codes are often related to self-harm. The data do not allow us to distinguish between self-harm and suicide, as it does not account for suicidal intent. Preventing suicide. Suicide prevention strategies can focus on the individual or on the community. At the individual level, prevention strategies should focus on treatment of mental illness and providing support for those who previously attempted suicide. community level, prevention strategies should focus on reducing access to lethal means, creating opportunities for gatekeeper training, education about mental illness and access to treatment, and generating awareness of mental health issues and suicide. Preventing violence. There are three main resources for violence prevention prepared by the World Health Organization. Violence, the Evidence, published in 2010. World Report on Violence and Health, published in 2002. And Preventing Violence, a guide to implementing the recommendations of the World Report on Violence and Health, published in 2004. The main prevention strategies outlined in Violence, the Evidence, include fostering safe, stable relationships between parents, caregivers, and children, life skill development in the early years, reduce the availability and harmful use of alcohol, promote gender equality, change the cultural and social norms that support violence, and provide and improve support for victims of violence. The main prevention strategies outlined in the World Report on Violence and Health include prevention strategies for specific high-risk groups, such as youth violence, violence towards children, intimate partner violence, and violence in the elderly. The key ideas outlined in Preventing Violence, a guide to implementing the recommendations of the World Report on Violence and Health, include priorities for communities interested in preventing violence. This concludes Module 3 of Fundamentals for Injury Prevention Practitioners. Continue your training with Module 4, Social Determinants of Health and Injury.